But first, we're going to hear from Portland's retiring fire chief, Sarah Boone. She's fascinating, and she has a fascinating story to tell. So it's our big story tonight. Sarah Boone is a real pioneer, the first black woman ever hired by the Portland Fire Bureau 28 years ago. She rose through the ranks to become the first black fire chief just four years ago. And now she is just days away from retirement. She's kind of shy when it comes to the press and often avoids reporters when she can. But recently, she was kind enough to meet me downtown at Fire Station 1. She agreed to sit down and talk through her career and her approaching retirement. I think our conversation is remarkable. It's a fascinating look behind the scenes at what it's like for her. She said the approaching retirement kind of bittersweet, bitter because it's always hard to say goodbye to a place that you care deeply about, but also sweet because she will finally be able to take off the heavy burden of responsibility that she's been carrying around since her very first promotion. So that first level, that first supervisory level is when people feel the weight and the responsibility of holding somebody's life in their hands. And then the decisions that you make can either change the outcome, not only for the public, but also for the people within your crew. And it just compounds as you go up the ladder. It compounds when you become a captain because your responsibility is for everybody within that station as well as that fire management area. It compounds when you become a battalion chief because now it's everybody within that district and all the stations that make up that battalion. So with every level, the expansion of worry uh, and the, the weight of it grows. So that's why I'll say when you coming back to your question of the weight of a fire chief, it's not the last four years. It's every day that I've been in position that I can send people into harm's way. So instead of two people, it's 756. And that is a heavy weight to carry. Yeah. Does it feel like a physical weight sometimes? It's, yeah, well, it's emotional, it's psychological, it's, yeah. And, and it's not just, you know, you rise and fall with the successes and the failures. Um, you take it all. Uh, and you also know that when you make decisions, and not just on life or death, but when you make decisions, you're never going to make everybody happy, right? And so it's one of those things. Um, I think uh, you try to compartmentalize and just focus on the work and the business, but as a human being, you're also emotional and you're a sponge and you absorb whether it's the, you know, uh, you didn't make the right decision or maybe this initiative didn't go the right way or maybe your budget is, uh, you know, beyond what it should be. There's always gonna be negative backlash. Uh, so I will just say that's, um, it's not a physical weight, but it's also just another um, interjection that when it comes to the psychology and the emotion of everything that you are internalizing and processing, uh, yeah, I guess it is a weight that's um, not the physical, but it is a lot. When Sarah Boone joined the Portland Fire Bureau back in 1995, she was the only African-American woman in the Bureau and just one of five women serving at the time. She said there was no overt discrimination aimed at her, but still, she could tell sometimes the public and fellow firefighters were uncomfortable around her. Or we, we just don't know what to say, yeah. right? And so again, I, I think that's the same thing. And when we go out, um, you know, and we serve over, you know, 600,000 people, not everybody's gonna have the same experience. People are gonna be socialized in different ways. People probably don't even know that they're consciously being racist or sexist or whatnot. But the fact is, if you don't start having those conversations and leveling the playing field to where uh, you're not coming from a place of fear, but you're coming from a place of, uh, you know, seeing somebody's experience through a different lens and then also validating who they are because of those experiences. More of an empathetic sort of... Empathetic, yeah. but to say, 
here's what it's like for me to have a lived experience, not only as a female, but as a black female mm -hmm. uh, in these environments, in this arena. And usually what people do is they center and say, oh, I don't see that. And it's like, well, of course you don't see it. You have to experience it. Well, you're never gonna experience that as a white male, mm -hmm. right? It's those, whether it's hidden cues, whether it's shunning, whether it's subtle things, right? Those are on such a um, level that may be unseen by everybody else, but acutely felt uh, because you know what uh, racism feels like. You know what misogyny feels like. She'd grown up in Portland and was a star athlete in high school and college. She was working as a high school teacher when she met someone from the Fire Bureau and was intrigued. As she looked into it more, she got hooked. And then she had to fit in. So um, just work exceptionally hard. Found the best firefighters. Uh, and it's just like an athlete. You know, you're not, you either can put your time on the court but it really is the things that you're doing on the weekends, on the days off, the extra things that people don't see in order to improve your outcomes. It's not just limited to when you clock in and when you clock out. I remember you once told me when I was asking about um, <clears throat> other people in your life and you said, I pretty much married the fire department. Yeah. It, you were that committed, that dedicated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the time, because you just didn't know, could you do both, Yeah. right? Or could you do both well? And so I guess that's kind of, um, you know, how my brain processes, which isn't always that great, is finding that balance and stability um, is, you know, other people, it works for them. It really does. I mean, it's a challenge but women have now come into the department and serve in the fire service and are trying to figure out how to balance being a mother, being a partner, and also 100% all in in their career. And they're, you know, that's management and working with your partner and time frame, all of those things. Um, was it worth it for you? Was it worth it for me to yeah. give up a uh, Being that single focused, maybe giving up a partner, giving up a family? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I think a couple of things. I mean, I don't want to get too personal. You can but, if you want. But I think, uh, I think for, you know, everybody has their own path to walk and you never know what the future is going to hold. But I, but I think for me, again, and how I process and how I, um, just the cards that I was dealt, it felt like for you to really excel at what resonates with your heart, it is married to this job. If I had that stronger pull when it came to, I really wish I had a family. Uh, and, and I've had that like in my 30s, but it wasn't as strong as this is what I'm dedicated to. Um, I don't know why. It's just the way I was wired and what I chose um, and what I could handle. Chief Boone has experienced many ups and downs over her career. She's looking forward to retirement and a chance to unpack many of the bits of trauma that she's picked up along the way. But again, it gets back to that emotion and what you're stepping down and it impacts families right okay. it impacts your health and then since we were talking in a working fire station a call came in for one of the big trucks <laughs> so pat what i was saying um being able to step out letting your guard down uh not being so um where you're not really addressing the trauma that you have seen over 28 years or uh, um, things that, that uh, really impact uh, just, just your overall health. It will be nice to step away and then give yourself some space 
and start, you know, whether it's going to counseling, whether it's going out and enjoying the activities you used to enjoy when, when you were younger and had the time, or maybe it's enjoying pursuing relationships that you couldn't pursue when, you know, I was dedicated to the job. And also it's just getting in touch with uh, the sides of you that you didn't have a chance to explore, the, whether it's being creative, whether it's art, whether it's music, whether all of those things get put on the back burner. But not for much longer. The chief's last day in office is July 12th. So what are your thoughts on the retirement of Chief Sarah Boone? Send them our way, will you? The email address is the story at KGW.com or call and leave a voicemail. The number is 503-226-5090.